Hello everyone. In this lesson, you will learn about vector indexing. So by the end of this lesson, you will learn how to extract values or items from vectors in R. Elements in a vector can be retrieved using their positions and this is called indexing. To access or retrieve an element using indexing, we write the name of the vector followed by square brackets. Inside the square bracket, you specify the position of the element you want to retrieve and the element at that very position will be returned as a result. For example, in this vector named vec, each element has its position in the vector from first to eighth positions. The index is simply the number for the position of that element. So indexing in R starts at one. Actually, some programming languages start at zero. Now, let's say you want to extract the number 10 in this very vector. Then you would have to write the code as vec followed by the square bracket and inside the square bracket, you specify the position of this number 10, which happens to be three. And when you execute that code, you will end up getting the result to be 10. Let's go to R and demonstrate how we can do vector indexing. In R Studio, I would like to create a vector and I would like to name this object as numeric underscore vector. I am going to create a vector containing only numbers. So let me just go ahead and enter some numbers for this particular vector. So we are going to go ahead and assign these multiple numbers into this very object. I would execute this code and let's print this to the console so that we see that this assignment has been made. At this point, if you want to access the first element in this particular vector, you would have to go ahead and write the name of the vector followed by the square bracket. And in there, you put the position of that element that you want to extract or return. In which case, I just simply want to return the first number. So I put in the number one. If I go ahead and execute this code, we see that the number 12 has been returned to the console. So this one actually returns the first item or first number so if i want to go ahead and return for example let's say the number in the third position then i would go ahead and put the three into the square bracket execute and then we get the result to be minus three which happens to be the third number in this vector if you recall when we were learning how to create vectors we used a function called length now, this is used to check how many items are stored in a vector or any other data structure for that matter. But in this case, let's do this for our numeric vector, which we have created. All I have to do is just pass into this particular function, my vector, which I have created. And if I run this line of code, we see that the result that is returned to the console is nine. This tells you that there are nine items in this very vector which is very easy to count. But imagine if you have created a vector containing many items or numbers, then this length function comes in to make life easier for you. So now that you have executed this line of code and you now know the number of items that happen to be in this vector, assuming you want to return the last item in this very vector, then all you can do is just simply go ahead and type the name of the vector followed by the square bracket and put in the position of this very number. Now, since there are nine items in this very vector, as proven by running the length function on our vector, for which we got a result to be nine, we can just simply go ahead and pass into the square bracket the number nine. And when we execute this, we end up getting the last number, which is in the vector, returned to the console, and that is the number three. Now, there is something very interesting in R. You did realize that when we executed the length function and we passed into it our vector which we created we got the result to be exactly this number nine for whose index we specify in returning the last item in that vector so all i can do is to copy this code and inside the square bracket pass into it the length of the numeric vector because this length of numeric vector retains the number nine. So essentially, all you are trying to do here is just simply replace what is inside the square bracket by that nine, but instead we use the length function as a result. So this shows you how complex you can perform your calculations or you can write codes in, 
in R. So if I go ahead and execute this, we end up getting the same result, which happens to be three. And that happens to be the last item in this vector. There are other wonderful things that you can do. For example, I can repeat the same code and I can go ahead and simply subtract one from this length of numeric vector because we do know that the length of numeric vector gives you the result to be nine. So nine minus one inside of this square bracket is simply eight. So if I go ahead and execute this, we end up getting the last but one item retained in the console. Another thing that you can also do is to use colon. You can use the colon symbol for specifying sequence of indexing, sequence of numbers that you want to extract from your vector. So let's go ahead and print this vector to the console yet again. So we have the same sort of vector and all I want to do is, for example, I want to retain the numbers from the first to the fifth position. So all I have to do in this square bracket is specify the number one, then followed by colon, then the number five. So if you go ahead and execute this, you can see that the first five elements in this vector have been retained. You can still go ahead and write the name of the vector and say you want to retain the elements in the third to the sixth positions. And if you go ahead and do that, you can get the elements from the third position to the sixth position. If you want to retain multiple numbers in different indices, you need to combine them using the C function, just like you will end up creating a vector. So for example, if I write the name of my vector object, which I created, and I wanted to retain the elements in the first and third positions, if you just pass into it one comma three, you know, you cannot use the colon sign because that tells you you are retaining the numbers from first to third position. So here, if you use the comma symbol and you execute this, you are going to get an error. Let me just demonstrate this just for demonstration purposes. So you realize that we get simply an error. So all you have to do is combine these numbers like some form of a vector. So you just put these numbers separated by the comma into the C function like this. So you combine one comma three as a vector inside of the square bracket. And that tells you you want to retain the numbers in the first and third position in this particular vector. So you can see that the vector, this is the first number and this happens to be the third number. And those two numbers were the ones that were retained after we executed this code. So another code I can also write to extract numbers in the second, fourth, and let's say eighth position is to write it this way, two comma four comma eight inside of the C function, combine them together inside of the square bracket, execute, and you will get the numbers that happen to be in the second, fourth, and the eighth positions in this very vector. In a similar fashion, let's say you want to access elements, except a particular element, then use the minus sign before the position of that element. So um, let me demonstrate this to you. So I'm going to write the name of the vector followed by the square bracket. And if I specify the number one inside the square bracket, then I am retaining or extracting the first number in this vector, which of course is going to give you the answer to be 12, because that happens to be the first item in this very vector right here. Now, if I go ahead and put the minus sign, which happens to be the hyphen symbol, if you put the minus sign before this position, then you are essentially telling how to retain all numbers except the first one. That is what this minus sign seeks to do. So once you bring the minus sign before the position, you are essentially telling how to retain any other number apart from the one which has this minus sign. So if I go ahead and execute this code, you can see that all the numbers have been returned in the vector except the very first one. So use the minus sign if you want to retain elements except that particular element in that position. In which case, I can also go ahead and do something like numeric vector, then inside the square bracket, I can say one, two, four. That would essentially mean that I want to retain all the numbers from the first to the fourth position. Now, let me clear the console. Let's print the numeric vector so that we can see what is in there. And then we can now run this line of code to extract the numbers from the first to the fourth positions. But this time around, I would like to bring all the numbers, return all the numbers, except the numbers in the first to fourth position. So give me all the numbers, except the first four numbers. So if I want to do that, 
Now, because there is a column symbol, if you put the minus one before this number one, it gets applied to only this minus one, which is going to give you some kind of result that you probably may not actually know what it is. At this point, I would not like to demonstrate what we are going to get if I kind of run this. Of course, you are going to get a result, but I just want to show it to you the very right way. So at a point when you are practicing, you can also execute a code like this and see what you get and compare with what you have learned from this lesson. So all I have to do is to put this one colon four into parenthesis so that R would see that this minus is applied to the first to fourth position in this sequence of indexing. If I go ahead and execute this code, we end up getting from negative one to three, which is what we get here. So all we told R is to extract all numbers except the very first four items. We also learned that we can combine the positions of elements in a non-sequence format. Like for example, you can say, let's extract the elements in the third position, the fifth position, and the eighth position. So if you go ahead and execute this line of code, these elements will actually be returned. All you have to do is put a minus sign before this combined numbers. And what R will do is essentially return all the numbers except these numbers, which happen to be in the third, fifth, and eighth position. So every other number apart from the elements in these positions will be returned. Vector indexing can be used to change any element in a vector, or even you can extend the vector by appending more elements. So for example, I would like to create a vector called vector of numbers and let's go ahead and put in some numbers so 12 5 7 1 0 7 so we now have this vector which we have created let's clear the console and let's print this object to the console and we have these numbers that have been assigned to this very object what i want us to do is i would go ahead and write vector of numbers followed by the square bracket and I put in the number one. Now, this actually retains the very first item or element in the vector. What I can do is I can also go ahead and assign another value, like say 1000. So what this code is trying to achieve is go to the vector of numbers object and then look at or extract the first item in this vector, which happens to be 12. When you extract only this number from this vector, which is the 12, go ahead and reassign the value 1000 to this number. So what this is doing is to replace the first item with a value of 1000. So if I execute this line of code and I go ahead and print the vector of numbers, this time you would see that the very first value has changed from 12 to 1000. In a similar fashion, I can also go ahead and write vector of numbers and then followed by the square bracket then i would go ahead and specify the second and the fourth position so i'm looking at the element in the second and fourth positions so that is essentially what this code is trying to achieve if i go ahead and execute this we end up getting the results to be five and one second and fourth position then I can also create another vector to replace these two numbers in the vector. I can go ahead and initiate my C function and I put in say 2000, 3000. So if I go ahead and execute this line of code and I print vector of numbers, you would observe that the second position and the fourth position will have been replaced with 2000 and 3000 just as you specified over here so you can also use this vector indexing to replace numbers or reassign values to that particular vector you can also use relational operations within square brackets for indexing and this would actually return all values where the operation is actually true for all cases if you recall let's clear the console if you recall, we had created the numeric vector. And if I execute it, this happens to be the vector that we created in the beginning of this demonstration in R. What I want us to do is to write numeric vector. And I would use a relational operator, the greater than symbol, and just simply compare with the number five. So I'm saying that 
every single number in this numeric vector is greater than five so if we execute this the code would return true for all cases where the number happens to be greater than five and then false where the number is not greater than five so we actually get this kind of true false output i can now go ahead and say numeric underscore vector and then I open my square bracket. Immediately, the square bracket comes after the name of the object which you have created. It means you are performing indexing, in which case you are now performing vector indexing. So I can grab this relational operator and put it into the square bracket. And what I'm essentially saying is that this numeric vector greater than five is going to return true or false statements, true where the condition is true and false where the condition is not. And if you put this into the square bracket, then you are saying that when you go into the numeric vector, which happens to be all of these numbers, I want you to return the exact numbers, the very element or numbers where every single number is greater than five. So when I execute this code, you'll see that all the values that are actually greater than five will be returned. So it's essentially returning all the numbers for where this relational operation is actually true and so that is exactly what we get here so numbers like minus three which are actually less than five will not be retained because it was false when we ran this relational operator and we can go ahead and perform complex indexing so i would say a numeric vector followed by the square bracket and then i can now go ahead and say numeric vector is greater than five and numeric vector is less than nine if i highlight this part of the code then it's just simply a relational comparison operator operation that we are doing so if i run this code we will get false for where this very operation is not true and true for where the operation is true so we simply have just one number within the numeric vector which happens to be greater than five and less than nine so if we put this relational operation into the square bracket and we perform indexing and it will return that number for which this very operation happens to be satisfied or happens to be true. So if I execute this code, we end up getting the one number which happens to be greater than five and actually less than nine in the vector which we created. This is how you can index vectors.